This is a discussion of the pedagogy of moral reasoning. This is a, a process-oriented inquiry-based pedagogical approach that's specifically designed uh, to develop moral reasoning and judgment. In moral reasoning and judgment, the capacity for moral reasoning and judgment cannot be taught as such. It can't be transmitted directly from the teacher to the student. Uh, but moral reason, the capacity for moral reasoning and judgment can only be developed through exercise and practice. It's only through the practice of reasoning and judgment that the capacity for it can be developed. And this, uh, this approach is, this perspective is based upon a particular conception of, uh, of a process-oriented inquiry-based pedagogy that's based in John Dewey's idea of education as the reconstruction of experience, that through reflection on experience, experience the capacity for future, can, future experience can be developed. And that reflective capacity or that reflective experience is, uh, is a process and it is based in inquiry. Paulo Freire's critical dialogical pedagogy also is an example of a process-oriented pedagogy for Freire. The pedagogical process begins with the posing of a problem, taking some uh, idea or belief uh, that is widely accepted and uh, posing it as a problem. Like instead of Columbus discovered America, uh, one could pose it as a problem by stating or proposing that Columbus invaded America. And by uh, posing problems in this way, making things problematic that were once widely accepted, uh, that opens to uh, inquiry and dialogue and critique of uh, commonly accepted beliefs. And this is categorized by Freire as a critical dialogical pedagogy. Betty Reardon, uh, peace educator Betty Reardon, uh, advocates a pedagogy of reflective inquiry, some influenced by both Dewey and Freire, that uh, the pedagogical process in various ways is a process of reflection and inquiry, of reflective inquiry. So the approach taken here is uh, the re approach to a pedagogy of moral reasoning adopts these ideas or the idea of a process-oriented, inquiry-based pedagogy. Furthermore, it, uh, the pedagogical approach builds on the idea of the logical structure of disciplines developed by Jerome, Jerome Bruner, among others, that, the log that disciplines of knowledge have a logical structure, and that structure is based upon its fundamental ideas, the fundamental ideas of a discipline, as well as its forms of thought or methods of inquiry. The fundamental ideas of a discipline refer to the underlying principles and questions that give structure to disciplines. And it's necessary for understanding the details of the subject matter, for using knowledge, for recognizing problems in the discipline and for understanding the relationships between elements of the discipline. And this takes the form, can take the form of a spiral curriculum, activity and learning spiral up to greater complexity around the access of the same fundamental ideas. The second dimension of the logical structure is the forms of thought and uh, a study of a discipline would uh, foster an analytic understanding of the methods of inquiry characteristic of the discipline. That is a reflective grasp of the forms of thought, as Israel Schleffler put it. 
So education and a discipline should cultivate the forms of thought characteristic of, of the discipline. That is, its uh, basic modes and methods of inquiry. As Dewey uh, suggested, the knowledge most worth knowing is, quote, knowledge of the ways by which anything is entitled to be called knowledge, instead of being mere opinion or guesswork or dogma, end quote. And that the method of inquiry or the form of thought is a mode of intelligent practice. It is a disposition of the mind. And only and it can only be developed by participating in the making of knowledge. So we can apply both the, the idea of the fundamental ideas as well as the method of inquiry to peace studies and it's in particular its normative dimension of peace studies. So in terms of the fundamental ideas of the normative dimension of, of peace studies, it includes the concept of peace understood as a matter of justice and related principles of justice, including values, rights, and duties defined by the basic questions of justice. And uh, the basic questions of justice uh, are, are comprised by uh, whose security, the question of who should have equal right to security of person, the question who belongs, who should be considered an equal citizen and thus a full participant in the society, that is what determines membership and standing in the society, the question of who, whose truth, what conception of truth and thereby reality should be affirmed, what is the va valid basis of the determination of truth, that is, uh, how do we uh, s resolve conflicts about, about belief in, in truth? Um, fourthly, the question of who gets what, which is uh, a question of distributive justice. How should the basic goods and resources, opportunities, etc., of the society be distributed? And then the fifth question is who decides who should have political decision-making authority? who should have power. It's a question of the uh, fair distribution of political power. And then the fundamental question in response to injustice is, is there a duty to resist injustice? And if so, what constitutes a justifiable means of resisting injustice? And the, uh, the traditions of of nonviolence, of nonviolent philosophy and strategy, as well as the just war tradition, uh, both advocate for a duty to resist injustice and to find the justifiable means of resisting injustice in various ways. Uh, these, these basic questions of justice uh, comprise the fundamental ideas of a normative ap approach uh, to peace and justice studies, and therefore to peace education. Um, in terms of the methods of inquiry as the logical structure of peace studies, um, the approach to moral reasoning that uh, is based in moral constructivism and appeal to moral reasoning based in the criteria of fairness uh, comprises the core method of inquiry of the normative dimension of peace studies as I have understood it and as I advocate for. The justification of principles of justice and the judgments based upon them as well as shared values are grounded in a particular process of moral reasoning. Uh, so, uh, from a pedagogical point of view, uh, the pedagogy of moral reason would engage in the practice of normative justification around uh, basic questions uh, to be uh, explored by students. Is, is your the student choice of principles of justice consistent with the criteria of fairness we could ask the students. Um, the principles of justice 
in a, in a variety of different contexts as determined by the basic questions of justice, uh, the various principles of justice that follow each of those questions, can uh, the choice of those principles uh, can be evaluated and justified in the end by reference to the criteria of fairness. We could also ask students to reflect on their values and whether those values are consistent with the criteria of fairness. And we could ask them to engage in a deliberation and a reflection on whether others would agree uh, to their choice of principles and values that are consistent with fairness. And here we might, uh, we might employ as a methodology Rawls's original position, for example, or Habermas's discourse principle, or Rainer Forrest's uh, principle of re general and reciprocal justification, etc. So we can ask them to engage in various uh, methodological approaches to moral reasoning uh, and to debate among themselves in groups uh, whether the their choice of principles and values are consistent with fairness and whether and therefore whether they can achieve a, an overlapping consensus within the group. Uh, secondarily, uh, not, uh, moral reasoning in, involves not only the justification of principles and values, but also the application of those principles and values uh, to uh, particular questions of justice at the level of laws, policies, practices, and institutions. Um, here students can be asked to apply principles and values to specific cases that highlight basic questions of justice, a process that serves to exercise their um, capacity for judgment. Uh, students can be asked uh, in response to basic questions of ju justice, are there judgments regarding laws, policies, practices, and or institutions consistent with their principles and values. Furthermore, the exercise of judgment, the application of principles and values necessarily involves critical analysis of uh, potentially unjustifiable principles just, uh, and values as well as unjustifiable laws, policies, practices, and institutions. So the exercise of judgment involves, a, involves critical uh, scrutiny, critical evaluation, critical analysis. So uh, to conclude, the pedagogy of moral reasoning and judgment uh, is an attempt to engage students in the practice of moral reasoning and judgment as structured by the logical structure of a uh, moral reasoning itself uh, in, in accordance with the presuppositional and morally moral constructivist uh, view of, of moral reasoning.